It's very easy to sample into the beatbox thanks to the sound card module built into the beatbox. Uh, let's see how it works. So I have a sample queued up on my phone. Let's hear it. So now I need a aux cable hooked up to my audio source and the other end hooked up to the microphone port on the back of the beatbox. And we're ready to sample. In order to sample, go to page three on the Rhythmolab app, which is the sampler page. So if you look at this bar on the screen, it indicates if there's an audio signal coming through. So if I play this sample right here, as you can see indicated by the green bar, there's an audio signal, so we're all good to go. There are two different ways to sample. One is manual mode. This is where you indicate where you want to start and stop sampling. And then there is detect mode. Detect mode detects a certain threshold being passed through uh, into the sound card and it'll only start recording when the audio source gets over a certain audio level threshold. Let's go to manual mode first. Hit shift and record will start the recording. So let's start playing the sample. You can see audio coming in. And to stop recording, hit stop. And it'll prompt you to save the sample that you just recorded. So let's hear it. So we've successfully got that sample going but you see how there's a giant empty spot before the sample actually started, which is the time it took me to get the sample playing on my phone. And this is when the detect mode could come in handy. So go into detect mode and set the threshold. You want to set the threshold to pretty low because a lot of times sound comes in with like a little ramp up. Uh, if you set the threshold too high, it will miss a part of the sample. But yeah, set the threshold to just above no sound at all and let's say shift, record. And as soon as I start playing the sample, it'll start recording. Like that. And let's save that sample. You see how it started recording right at the beginning of the sample. Each pad has four slots available for recording, so you can record the same sample four times and see which one you like the most that you want to keep. Right? So uh, in this slot, we already have slot one filled. So if we go to slot two, we can record the sample again. Like that. So. So now you can compare which take you wanted the most. If you exit out of the sampler page, then the current slot that you have available on the sampler page will be the only sample stored into the pad. So say if I have slot two active, I go back to another page, come back. That'll be the only one that's available. So make sure if you haven't decided which one you want, don't exit out of the sampler page. The third choice here is to control which audio capture source you want to use, which doesn't actually work on iOS, but our Android app, on the other hand, you can switch the audio source from the onboard sound card to the microphone built in on the phone. Let's switch this over and see what we can do with that. Here, as you can see, on the drop down menu, you have the USB audio, beatbox audio. That's obviously the USB sound card built into the beatbox. And as you can see, there is no sound being passed through on the threshold meter. But if you switch it to our Pixel 4a built-in microphone, now all of a sudden you can see it's detecting my voice. So we can do some cool stuff like this. Oh. 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 Yay. On iOS, you can still record into your microphone by simply detaching the beatbox from 
the device. So as you can see, right now it's detecting my microphone input. The thing about iOS is that it automatically handles audio device on its own. Whenever you switch the audio device to the beatbox, say if you plug in the beatbox, it'll automatically just switch to the beatbox sound card. So if you do want to record vocally or live into the microphone on your iOS device, just detach your beatbox and that should work. So now that we got some samples recorded, as you can see here, we have a long empty space in front of the sample. So if you want to trim your sample, go to trim tab, which is C4, and you can use your knobs to control the start and stop point of the sample. So let's say have it right when the sample starts. To finalize a trim, hit shift, trim, and you get to save your trimmed sample. You can also zoom in and move around with the third and fourth knob on the beatbox. You can also slice one full sample into multiple individual samples in Slice tab. So let's go to Slice tab. The Slice tab would be applied to any sample that's active before you go into the Slice tab. So make sure you choose your sample before you go into the tab. So the Slice function works in two ways. Uh, when the sample is not playing, if you hit a empty pad, it'll automatically slice the sample from the middle point of the sample. So if I hit this button right here, it will automatically slice the sample in half. If you hit the pads while the sample is playing though, you'll slice the sample at the playhead of when you hit the button. So. You can adjust the start and stop point of the slice by simply dragging the playhead around. So say if I want to have this slice open up a little bit. Just like that. In order to save the entire slice settings, go into shift and slice. And now you get to pick a bank that you want to save all the slices as individual samples in. So let's say group two right now is an empty group. And as you can see, we have six slices in total to save. So we can just click six buttons. And there we have all the samples assigned to pads. So let's hit save and go back to the main group into group two. And as you can see, all of our slices are available as individual samples. There you go, that's how you record and slice and trim samples.